Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 love at first sight scenes in movies. Hey, is that real? She couldn't be. For this list, we'll be looking at moments on the big screen where one or more characters fall in love in a flash. We're excluding scenes from Disney movies, which already have their own list. Which of these scenes made you believe in love at first sight? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, a leading lady, The Truman Show. Good morning, Truman. Hey, how are you guys? Beautiful day, isn't oh, it? Always. Uh. Even though Truman is an unwitting reality star living in a thoroughly fake world, it doesn't mean he's resigned to fate. This becomes clear in one scene when he first lays eyes on Sylvia. <laughs> She's only an extra in the production, but she captures his attention in a way that his predestined love interest Meryl is unable to. I'm so sorry to fall on you like that. The film is a psychological comedy drama, but it also has a strong romantic element that's established in this scene. With the duo locking eyes across their college campus, the connection between them is obvious. And even though they don't immediately get together, the moment seems to push Sylvia to join the movement to free Truman. Hi. Number 19, The Thunderbolt, The Godfather. Mamma mia, io sono cascato innamorato. Ma vado su per la montagna. This epic crime flick is classic for a reason, and this scene has one of its most beautiful moments. For one, it's visually stunning. Michael Corleone, son of mafia boss Vito, is in the gorgeous Sicilian countryside when he meets Apollonia. From a pastoral scene in a wine-colored dress that makes her stand out, Michael is a deer in headlights when he sees her, and it's immediately clear that the couple has some sort of future together. <laughs> Unfortunately, being involved in a complex crime syndicate isn't exactly conducive of a peaceful relationship, and indeed, fans of the series know that the duo doesn't have a happy ending. No! No, I believe <laughs> Number 18, Birdsong, Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. Tim Burton directed this adaptation of the stage musical, and it contains his signature blend of darkness and romanticism. It focuses on the demon barber and his relationships, but the film's most heartwarming moment doesn't actually involve him. Rather, it's his old friend, Anthony's first encounter with Todd's daughter, Johanna. Now the ward of the corrupt judge, Turpin, Johanna sits in front of a window singing one day. She catches Anthony's attention, who looks up at her from the street. The longing in their faces is palpable and marks a moment of hope in an otherwise macabre story. Number 17, Counting Sheep, The Quiet Man. Leading man John Wayne might be known for his work in westerns, but he's just as good in this romantic comedy drama set in Ireland. Sean Thornton, an Irish immigrant in America, returns home to deal with family business. Although he's there for work, he's not exactly immune from distractions. One day, not long after his arrival, he strolls into a roadside grove for a cigarette. To his surprise, he sees a ravishing redhead herding a group of sheep. She wordlessly looks back at him, not one, but five times. Shot. The actor's stares are intense, but the scene's true accomplishment is visual. As Mary-Kate Danaher recedes into a meadow, the moment takes on an unforgettable, dreamlike quality. Number 16, Trapeze If You Please, The Greatest Showman. It's not unusual for love at first sight scenes to take place between a performer and a spectator, but in this musical drama, the love connection occurs between colleagues working in P.T. Barnum's namesake circus. Zac Efron plays Philip Carlyle, a young man in charge of publicizing the show, while Zendaya plays a talented acrobat in the company's employ. What was that? 
During one performance, their eyes meet ever so briefly while she swings on a trapeze. The way the scene is shot is part of what makes it so special. In slow motion, we see Anne Wheeler's grace and strength on display, but the effect also extends the character's eye contact, conveying the intense emotions they are feeling. What is your act, Mr. Carla? I don't have an act. Everyone's got an act. Number 15. The Sparkling Diamond, Moulin Rouge They delight in fighting duels But someone else was to meet Satine that night. This movie focuses on a love triangle between cabaret performer Satine and her two romantic interests. Interestingly, they both stare at her intently during her performance of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. A kiss on the hand Oh, oh my continental but while one has affection in his eyes, the other isn't exactly the loving type. Ewan McGregor's Christian is a bright-eyed writer fascinated with the Parisian underground, and he's the perfect foil for the conniving Duke. I've arranged a private meeting just you and Mademoiselle Satine. Totally alone. Alone? Yes. Totally alone. It might not be obvious, but this stunning moment captures the stakes of the entire film. And if it weren't enough, Satine's captivating act has our eyes glued to the screen too. Number 14. There Goes the Bride. Imagine me and you. I did your flowers. Oh, did you? Oh, well, they're, they're fabulous. If there's a classic trajectory in romance movies, you might say it begins with love at first sight and ends with a wedding. But this film totally flips that script. Rachel is a bride walking down the aisle in her own nuptials when she spots Luce. She's clearly taken with the florist, but when she does a double take, the latter has disappeared. Little does she realize Luce is now behind her, reciprocating her longing stare. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and in the... In the blink of an eye, the poetic moment establishes the film's central conflict. It's no wonder this flick focuses on love at first sight. Its original title, Click, was based on the French expression for this concept. Number 13. The Support Group. The Fault in Our Stars. Sorry. My bad. This movie is definitely heartbreaking, but it has its fair share of utterly romantic moments as well. One of these is Hazel Grace Lancaster's first encounter with Augustus Waters, a fellow cancer patient who will profoundly change her life. After literally bumping into one another, they meet at a support group. Not most people's idea of a swoon-worthy first date. So he wants to start? He wants to kick it off. Go ahead. I'm Beth. I have spinal cell sarcoma. But considering Hazel's difficult circumstances, it's heartening that she runs into someone special on her very first therapy visit. When two star-crossed lovers meet, they don't always make an immediate connection. Oblivion's inevitable. And if that scares you, then I suggest you ignore it. God knows it's what everyone else does. But from the way this pair's eyes linger ever so slightly, it's clear that there's something going on. And Gus certainly isn't shy when it comes to eye contact during the meeting itself. Number 12. The Carnival. The Notebook. Who's this girl with Sarah? <laughs> Her name's Allie Hamilton. Sure, Noah's way of asking Ali out at the carnival makes for an incredibly iconic movie scene. Oh, you go out What? No! However, his first glimpse of his true love is also extremely romantic. As the lumber mill worker is informed of Ali's presence in town, he watches her driving a bumper car. Her laughter and free spirit are infectious, and a smile creeps across his face. <laughs> It'd be hard to guess the dramatic events that transpire from here on out, beginning with Noah's way of proposing a date. But it's already obvious from this moment that his relationship with Ali is going to be one for the ages. Number 11. This One Girl. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. You know this one girl with hair like this? Yes, that's Ramona Flowers. Witty, mysterious, and drop-dead gorgeous, Ramona Flowers is the definition of a dream girl. We can't blame Scott Pilgrim for falling head over heels from the minute he lays eyes on her, which he actually does on three separate occasions before ever exchanging words. <laughs> oh, 
crushing his plastic cup at a party, Scott finally approaches the ninja delivery girl and strikes up a conversation about, what else? Pac-Man. Hey, what's up? Nothing. Hey, you know Pac-Man? I know of him. Well, Pac-Man was originally called Puck-Man. They changed it because, uh, not because Pac-Man looks like a hockey puck. Paku Paku means flap your mouth. And that they were worried people would change, scratch out the P, turn it into an F, like. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Unsurprisingly, Ramona isn't immediately won over by the timid Scott. Although he gets rejected, Scott isn't willing to give up on the girl he met once upon a dream. Dude, what? She's totally real. Who? Ramona Flowers. The scene wonderfully establishes their relationship and just the right balance of comedy, awkward charm, and pop culture trivia. Am I dreaming? I'll leave you alone forever now. Thanks. Number 10. Everything becomes clear. Back to the Future, Part 3. Hey, Scott! Being a man of science, Doc Brown doesn't believe in love at first sight. As a matter of fact, romance is the furthest thing from his mind. However, this all changes when he meets Clara Clayton. Stuck in 1885, Doc and Marty stumble upon a runaway wagon with a damsel inside. Doc pulls off a daring rescue just in the nick of time, altering history. When Clara lifts her hat and reveals her face, Doc feels as if he's been stricken with a bolt of lightning. Likewise, Clara is equally smitten with her rescuer. I'm a brown at your service, miss. Um, um, Clayton. Clara Clayton. Cute and corny, while also being exciting and humorous, this first encounter perfectly demonstrates the power of love. What a beautiful name. Number 9. A Heart Full of Love, Les Miserables. A heart full of love. A heart full of song. Love at first sight isn't exactly an everyday occurrence, then again, neither is sporadically breaking out into song. Thus, the suspension of disbelief is required in a musical like Les Miserables. Since the music and romance here hit just the right note, we're more than willing to go along for the ride. The first exchange between Cosette and Marius is brief, but it still manages to be poignant, uplifting and utterly romantic. With an instrumental version of One Day More playing in the background, these two lock eyes and are sent into a dreamlike state. Marius becomes overwhelmed with a heart full of love, which sadly leaves poor Eponine heartbroken. Eponine! Number 8. Boy Meets Girl, 500 Days of Summer What do you think, Hanson? Could you write up some prototypes for these? In the Northern Hemisphere, the summer solstice can occur any time between June 20th and June 22nd. For Tom Hansen, however, summer begins on January 8th. Why? Because this is the day he meets Summer Finn. Everyone, this is Summer, my new assistant. Summer just moved here from... Michigan. Right, Michigan, right. Tom is quickly enticed by his boss's new assistant, although he doesn't even speak to her. Nevertheless, he can see that Summer isn't just another girl. It's nice to meet you all. Tom has a feeling that fate will bring him and Summer together, marking the beginning of a beautiful love story. Cue their encounter with the elevator a few days later. I love the Smiths. Of course, Tom also believes that The Graduate ends on a happy note. And a total misreading of the movie The Graduate. In other words, he doesn't understand women or romance. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. I love him. Number seven, A Christmas Carol. Carol. I wonder if you might help me find this doll for my daughter. Set in the 1950s, Carol takes place during an era where homosexuality was widely considered taboo. Because of this, Carol and Therese rarely discuss the nature of their relationship. Through subtle body language, though, we can always tell what these two are thinking. From the moment Carol and Therese meet in a department store, the audience senses a strong bond. But I'm afraid we're out of stock. Oh, left it too long. 
Seeking a Christmas present for her daughter, the stylish Carol approaches the modest store clerk. Thus ensues a friendly conversation full of understated sexual tension. What was your favorite doll when you were four? Me? Well, I never, not many to be honest. I'm sorry, you're not allowed to smoke on the sales floor. Oh, of all, forgive me, shopping makes me nervous. That's all right, working here makes me nervous. <laughs> you're very kind. Carol then departs, but forgets to pick up her gloves. We can't help but wonder if she subconsciously left the gloves behind on purpose in hopes of seeing Therese again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Number six, the sweetest voice in the wide world, Forrest Gump. I remember the bus ride on the first day of school very well. Forrest Gump's incredible story wouldn't be complete without a touch of romance. Our titular hero meets the love of his life on his first day of school. Boarding the bus, Forrest is deemed an outcast for being different. Fights, tiger. Tiger. can't sit here. The only classmate that offers him a place to sit is Jenny, who wins Forrest over with her kindness, beauty and sweet voice. I do remember the first time I heard the sweetest voice in the wide world. You can sit here if you want. I had never seen anything so beautiful in my life. She was like an angel. While Forrest isn't the brightest bulb, Jenny can see that he's a sincere human being in need of a friend. These two simply exemplify young love in the purest sense, with the memory sticking with Forrest well into his adult years. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. I'm Jenny. I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. Even when they're separated for extended periods, his love for Jenny never dwindles. She taught me how to climb. I showed her how to dangle. Good she helped me learn how to read. And I showed her how to swing. Sometimes we just sit out and wait for the stars. Number five, a meeting to remember. Sleepless in Seattle. I left her by the telescopes. Although they're on completely separate paths, Annie feels a powerful connection to Sam upon hearing him bear his soul on the radio. Maggie. Ah, uh, my wife. She really did it. Uh, I mean, she loved it. She made everything beautiful. And it's, it's just tough this, this time of year. I mean, any kid needs a mother. Likewise, Sam is drawn to Annie after seeing her get off an aeroplane. While they have a couple of close encounters throughout this romantic comedy, Sam and Annie don't officially meet until the final scene. With some help from Sam's son, the two wind up atop the Empire State Building on Valentine's Day. It's you. It's me. I saw you in the street. Are you Annie? Yes. Both know that it's crazy and unrealistic to fall in love with someone you barely know. Looking into each other's eyes, however, neither can deny their true feelings. This must be yours. I'm Jonah. This is my dad. His name's Sam. Hi, Jonah. Sam. After waiting so long to see these two come together, this ending delivers everything the audience had hoped for. Number four, a rose by any other name, Titanic. I'm Tommy Ryan. Jack Dawson. Hello. Described as the ship of dreams, the RMS Titanic provides the backdrop for Jack and Rose's epic love story in this movie. A penniless artist, Jack is immediately drawn to the aristocratic redhead. Staring off into the ocean, Rose longs to break free from her confined lifestyle and loveless engagement. Oh, forget it, Boyle. You just like how the angels fly out of your arse is get next to the likes of her. Although his friends insist that he doesn't have a shot with her, 
Jack is too captivated to simply let social barriers separate them. From that moment forward, our hero carries a torch for the lovely Rose. No matter what forces them apart, nothing can put out the flame that ignites their eternal love. The result is a romance for the ages. <laughs> Where to, miss? To the stars. Number three, time stops. Big Fish. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you all for coming. Director Tim Burton has given us some of the most beautiful and strangest romances of the past couple of decades. In Big Fish, Burton once again captures the sensation of falling in love through astounding visuals. At the Callaway Circus, a gorgeous stranger captivates the wide-eyed Edward Bloom. He is so entranced that time seemingly stands still. They say when you meet the love of your life, time stops. And that's true. Pushing through the lively crowd, Edward comes face to face with his destiny. As the elderly narrator points out, however, when the time starts up again, it goes twice as fast to catch up. <laughs> In the blink of an eye, his dream girl is gone, but Edward won't rest until he finds her. Inventive and romantic, it's like something right out of a tall tale. And I'm gonna find that girl and marry her and spend the rest of my life with her. Number two, West Side Dance, West Side Story. You're not thinking I'm someone else. I know you are not. Or that we've met before? I know we have not. While not a direct adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, West Side Story was inspired by Shakespeare's most famous work right down to the love at first sight trope. In this classic musical, our lovers are a young Caucasian-American man named Tony and a Puerto Rican beauty named Maria. These two are instantly attracted to one another, despite the animosity between their rival gangs. As they exchange looks at a dance, everyone else in the gym fades away. Coming together in perfect harmony, the two fall into a hypnotic state and share an intimate dance. As far as Tony and Maria are concerned, nothing will come between them from this moment on. Maria, I've just met a girl named Maria. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Aquarium – Romeo and Juliet To be sure, the 1968 film version of this Shakespeare classic also deserves a shout-out. With Juliet looking absolutely striking in a red dress, it's no wonder Romeo can't take his eyes off her, but arguably Baz Luhrmann's 1996 retelling of the tragedy captures the feeling of love at first sight like no other. Having snuck into the Capulet costume party, Leonardo DiCaprio's Romeo becomes captivated by the vibrant Aquarian. But he doesn't only see fish. Juliet's eye catches his attention, and the duo stare curiously at each other through the glass. The camera work is simply stunning, with the aquarium's distortions creating some truly memorable shots. With the film's love theme playing in the background, the moment couldn't be any more romantic. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.